This is a really interesting, mysterious book because the cover is really weird. I feel like this is a book that someone made and then they sold it and I was the person who bought it. So I bought this book a while ago. I don't know if it's available. I'll, I'll try to find it and if I can find it, I'll leave info in the description, but it's pretty rare. This is a book from the Soviet Union. B.S. Belikov, General Methods for Solving Physics Problems. Wow, this is super rare. And then it says something there, I don't, I don't read Russian. Mir Publishers Moscow. I'm sorry, I gotta give it a whiff here. Oh, it smells so good. So for those of you that don't know, Mir Publishers was, I don't know if it still is, a publishing company in the Soviet Union. And then they would take books that were written in Russian and translate them to other languages like English, Spanish, and a whole bunch of other languages. And they would distribute the knowledge of these leading Russian scientists and they would spread it all over the world. So people all over the world, especially in a lot of uh, Latin American countries, studied and learned using these, I guess now, old, or I wanna use the word ancient, but they're not that old, old Soviet Union textbooks. Um, these books are very different from modern books. As a collector of math books, these are some of my most prized books. I have quite a few of these old books. And I wanted to show you this one here because this one's a physics book, right? Translated from the Russian by Eugene Yankovsky. He's actually translated several books uh, for Mir Publishers, and this is first published in 1989. To the reader, Mir Publishers would be grateful for your comments on the content, translation, and the design of this book. I'm getting goosebumps, I don't know why. We would also be pleased to receive any other suggestions you may wish to make. Like they, they care about your input and they give you like a mailing address. So you can actually, you know, mail something there. I, I love how old school this is, you know, before the internet, you know, people would use snail mail. And there's some stuff here. I don't know what that is. Maybe if someone watching this um, reads, can read this, you know, leave a comment. I know a lot of people here from all over the world watch these videos. This channel is very, very international. Printed in the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Wow, what is all this? Let's read this here together, see what it says. This is the preface. It's like a piece of history here. The revolution in science and engineering makes it necessary to seek new ways of more effectively training specialists for the national economy. What must be done so that theoretical knowledge that a student acquires in college does not remain passive but is used with maximal efficiency in practical work. Until recently, this was achieved with relative success in the traditional way. But now with the information explosion, this is becoming ever more difficult. The body of information has become so large that it cannot be comprehended in the limited period of education unless organized on an entirely new basis. I like, I like, I like how he says that. So like if you're in a class and you're trying to learn everything, it, it's really hard to learn everything. Like typically, in a classroom setting, I would absorb maybe 60 to 70% of what was taught. At the end of the semester, I maybe really understood 80% after study and going home. So it's hard to learn everything. The basis could be the extended and systematic use of generalized methods, general methodological principles, and very general concepts. Let's take a look at, at some of the contents here and see what else is in here. Here's the contents, see what's in here. The theoretical basis of the general approach to solving any physics problem. So any physics problem. The system of fundamental concepts of physics. Some general methods for solving physics problems. Just generalities. It's speaking in generalities. Solution of standard problems. It talks about, this is mechanics. The motion of a particle. The motion of rigid bodies. So you would do this like in physics one in the US. The gravitational field. Some more content here. This is... Uh, theory of physical fields, the electric field, the magnetic field, the electromagnetic field, electromagnetic waves. Then we have thermodynamics and kinetic energy, which is thermodynamics and kinetic energy. Then we have solution of non-standard, non-specified, and arbitrary problems. Wow, let's read this here. It often happens that a student has a good knowledge of the theoretical aspects of the physics course but does not know how to solve physics problems. That's interesting. I just wanna pause here for a moment because that, that's interesting. That, that's an interesting comment. I guess my experience when I took physics was that I didn't have a solid knowledge of anything, right? I, I couldn't solve the problems and I didn't have a good knowledge of the theoretical. I, I struggled a lot because my mathematics was weak. Anyways, back to the book. Some students admit that they encounter no difficulties 
in studying theory and can memorize and understand formulas, definitions, etc., but are not able to cope with problems. Right? You have to apply the formulas, apply the ideas to the actual problems, and you can only do that by getting better and doing problems. They do not even know how to begin, and at times while solving a problem, they get bogged down in theory, and after writing down numerous formulas, laws, and equations, do not know whether they have solved the problem or are close to or far from the solution. Yes, often after solving a problem correctly in general form, they make mistakes in calculations, and an incorrect numerical result means an incorrect solution after all, and cannot be considered valid. Yeah. So this book aims to remedy all that. Here's chapter one. The system of fundamental concepts of physics, some general concepts of physics. It's got a nice big font. Uh, its book is very weird. Very weird in the sense that, um, again, this, this cover is interesting. i got to give it a whiff here. Classification of physics problems. Stages in solving a formulated problem. There's some, some physics formulas here. Oh, what's this? What is this? We have found something in the book. Let's just pause here for a moment and see what this is. This is not me. I did not write this. Is it one page? Oh, it's two pages. Oh, it opens up. Let's open it up. Wow. Wow. Look at this. Look at this. This is so cool. Oh, this is amazing. Belikov, Thursday, 6 June 96. So in 1996, here it says Pinsky. Maybe that was the person. Maybe Pinsky was the individual who was working through this book on Thursday the 6th of June in 1996. Wow, look at, look at their handwriting. Look how small they write. That's what happens when you do advanced math and advanced physics. You learn to write really small. Yeah, I don't know why it says Pinsky there. Maybe it's a different book. Maybe they have a, a book that was written by Pinsky. Because here it says Belikov, and then here it says Pinsky. So maybe the person that was using this book um, was using two, two different books. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, wow. Wow, look at all this mathematics. Crazy, right? I'm going to put this back in the book. Interesting book, right? Is there anything in the back here? Let's check the back of the book. Looks like something was here and now it's missing. Maybe it was that piece of paper. Or is there something buried underneath the cover? Like, is there like a secret pamphlet that has been hidden in this book, <laughs> right? So, you know, so maybe someone wrote a letter or something. I don't know. It has a conclusion at the end. That's kind of interesting. It is time to summarize. We have used many examples to illustrate the simple fact that the general approach to the solution of any problem in the course of college physics amounts basically to the ability to analyze an arbitrary physical phenomena or a collection of phenomena. Yeah. I guess the conclusion is for someone who has made it that far in the book, they have read this entire book. They have worked through this old Soviet Union physics book. What an interesting problem. Interesting book. Interesting book. Yeah, wow. Interesting. I, I will try to look for this book. I don't think I'll find it. Uh, if I can find any copies, if I can find any at all, I'll leave a link in the description. There's probably only like, typically with these books, I know this because I'm a collector. Like, there's only usually there's only like two or three copies for sale, usually because that's all there is. There's, there's, there's just not that many out there, right? So uh, there's only a few copies probably on the internet for sale. I doubt unless it was reprinted, but I really doubt it. These usually aren't reprinted. Um, but yeah, I will look for it. And uh, if you're interested in picking up a piece of history, ah, oh, it smells so good. You can check it out. Also, I do have math courses, not physics courses, but you can check them out. They're on my website, mathsorcerer.com. They're actually on the Udemy platform, but uh, please use my website if you decide to get them because it helps me greatly. Uh, otherwise, Udemy takes a huge cut. And if you found any value in this content, feel free to hit subscribe. Key takeaway from this video, I guess, should be that this is a really interesting book. It's old. It's rare. It's a book from the Soviet Union. Right here it says it again. Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Wow, it's just so, so, so old. 89, 89. Yeah, interesting book, right? Really rare stuff. If you found any value in this content, subscribe if you want to. Until next time, good luck, take care, keep doing math and physics.